lives in a pineapple under the sea. Five, five square facts. <laughs> Uh, oh, porous, what? porous and yellow and horus is he. <laughs> Spudge, Bob, square, square fans. Uh, fuck Spudge, yeah. Bob, I can never fans. learn the lyrics. Sing it. Why does nobody Bob, ever talk about Patrick? Pants. Swamp the ball, no one ever sings a song about Patrick. Yeah, that's the best introduction ever to a stream. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Fraser. How? There's that tweet. <laughs> I love how Filmshot was already taken as a Twitter name, so I had to put two next to it. Oh, yeah, I mean, all you know, that's the problem with the internet is trying to establish a, a handle. I, I did so much research early on in the fandom when I was settling on my name, and yeah, yeah you still you do your best. You just, yeah. Yeah. You just got scribbled. Interesting name. But the key for me is you capitalize the B. That's the signature. It's like YouTube, and still, so many people get it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> That's annoying. Well, it's Sky and Vault. Two different it's so games. simple. Like, I mean, yeah. I'm like, it's just like YouTube. You capitalize the fourth letter. But, you know. So, the worst thing, and, and and not like it's bad for them, but it's just hard to follow. It's like people who have like five different handles across different places. And you're like, what do I even call you when we're on a podcast? Yeah. And they're like, oh, call me this. It's like, but that's not your name. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I try to stick to the same name across the yeah, board. That's exactly brand recognition. Otherwise, if I couldn't get them the same name across the board, then I will not keep the name. Hmm. Yeah, I did kind of remember having the same trouble when it came to that I, when I didn't have my OC yet. Of course, mm -hmm. I did go by Chris already, but they didn't have a face to it. So sometimes yeah, made like tr trouble troubles them. Chabas, yeah, no. I and mean, I you could have gone with Rosalia, but I understand. Chris, different. Is it Rosalia the Pokemon? <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> pony feathers, you're right. Yeah, that's why I didn't go with her. She's a very nice Pokemon, though. Yeah. No, Rosalia is the character Chris plays in our Wild Worlds RP, uh, who is a who is a also a purple wolf, who is our daughter. Adorable. Oh, I guess it's Roselia is the Pokemon. Yeah, Roselia is the Pokemon. That's right. Roselia is my adorable fluffy daughter. Speaking of Pokemon, did uh, has everyone heard the news that Snap is back? That, that they snapped back a, another nostalgic classic for the 25 year anniversary? Doesn't surprise me. The weird thing, though, and I don't say this to be mean, as someone who's very Gen 1 and Gen 2, uh, for whatever reason, they have Mag Meganium, wh whatever the third evolution of Chikorita, as like the title or kind of like significant cover box character. And I'm like, but why though? <laughs> she wasn't even popular in her own generation. So that was kind of weird. But yeah. Maybe they don't do Pokemon. Like, I'm glad they're still going back to the old ones, but me as a, a as a fire pokey pokey boy, uh, it would have been so much cooler if they, they put Typhlosion. You know, that would have been great. Well, Ooh, I... maybe we should introduce ourselves. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Why don't you start? Seeing you said it. Uh, okay, hi guys. I'm Midnight Twenty Nine. I've been here before. I'm the Wolf of Pony and Wolf Productions. Next. <laughs> Your turn. I'm, I'm occupied. Your turn. Oh, I guess I'll go. I am uh, Skybolt. I do writing and music stuff in in the fandom. I've done parodies, uh, symphonic metal operas, follow the question. Yeah. And I'm Film Shot. I do SFM animations, and I'm looking forward to doing voice acting work as well. Right now, nothing to really show for it, but there will be. <laughs> Wait, you do Fallout? I uh, love Fallout. Uh, I've already forgotten your name because I'm not looking at it. Skybolt? Skybolt, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I ended up doing a, a whole big series called uh, Confessions of a Wasteland Pony, which was sort of a radio play thing. And uh, it was funny. That was sort of my own early like attempts at voice acting as well, where it's like, well, I'll just write my own show. Uh <laughs> and uh, it, it worked out pretty well. I, I think some people seemed to like it and everything. Uh, and then I helped out with this other series we had on our, our group channel called Escorp, 
uh, which is uh, Terminal Secrets. And uh, anyway, the, the, with the first one, that's how I met Chris in the first place. She got cast as one of the big, big scary characters yeah. called the Red Reaper, uh, Ooh, Carmina. Fair me. <laughs> oh, it's such it's such a great episode. She really pulls out all the stops of being scary. <laughs> yes, yes, very. I this am does evil. not compute. Very scary. <laughs> yes. Fair uh, enough. No, the reason I ask is because um, my fiance, uh, Visual Pony, has done a lot <laughs> of the plot. <laughs> yeah. It's it was one of those things where I was like, and that's what did well. Like I started off doing like parody songs, like kind of weird owl stuff as well. I was inspired by, uh, and then I uh, I finally read Fallout Equestria, and I did this one song called uh, "Facing the Fallout," which was an Imagine Dragons parody, and it just got so many dang views that I'm like, okay, we'll make some more, and they kept getting more views, and I'm like, okay, I already love and know Fallout, and I know Pony, so just kept going. <laughs> Here we are. That's usually the case. <laughs> it's also a lot of fun. Oh, and I played Puppy Smiles in Pink Eyes. In oh, great! Uh, it was a Cinder's production? Cinder script? No, no, no. Uh, uh, Visual Pony. Oh, sorry. Yeah, cool. Yeah, he has a lot of... Uh, um, what's the name again? The thing that the bookie... A uh, voice book. Well, voice like yeah, uh, loads of audiobooks. He's actually the one who finished Horizons. Oh, great. Yeah, I listened... Uh, that's how I listened to Fallout Equestria originally was with the Craze Rambling, his recording. And uh, But I, I loved to, like, radio play audiobook stuff for a long time. Fair enough. <laughs> what about you, film shot? Do you have any stuffy buffies you have listened to or list people? Stuffy stuff that I listen to? Yeah. Music wise? Uh, I was thinking. It's all metal and reggae. <laughs> it's like, Norwegian, yeah, I just listen to. <laughs> Norwegian metal, yes. The average... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. The average music I listen to is electro swing, and I like orchestra music. Mm -hmm. I love orchestra music if it's done right. <gasps> That's the great thing about like modern like film score soundtracks too, especially for writing. I'm like, okay, well, what kind of like vibe am I going for? I'm writing like, you know, this kind of something inspired. So I'm like, okay, I'll put on the movie soundtrack from that. See if that, that you know clicks some wheel. It's great. It's a golden age for music these days. It's so like I just got these new uh, headphones too, and everything just sounds so amazing and clear quality for like you know all the the next editing coming up down the road. Yeah, I just ordered a new headset too, the Sennheiser ones. Yeah, yeah, I, I got the uh, Bayer Dynamic uh, 990. Yeah, the Pro 300s. The I got blue 300s. ones. Yeah, I saw my Blue Yeti microphone. That's an old favorite. I also just got a new audio interface because the last one shorted out, which explains why a lot of my recordings were being. <laughs> yeah, that happened to my brother too. It's just, you know, so whatever the weakest link is, something shorts, yeah, and you're so like, I got... damn it. <laughs> Yeah, this one's cooler too. It's black and blue instead of like black and white the other one was. And this is a Personas one. I got an XLR mic. I got another one that's better, but this one's more for Discord, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, we got two questions in chat. You read my mind, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first is from Noah21. Question for Skybolt Midnight and Filmshot. What is your favorite Team Rocket member? Mine is Cassidy and... And Botch. <laughs> I think it's Butch. Okay. You might you might have botched the name. No, just kidding. I I I would not take offense to that. I can't say no to Jesse and James. I know I'm a Gen Oneer OG. I love like, Jesse and James. Honestly, they're they're just a laugh. And well, they try so hard. Yeah, considering I only watched like maybe four episodes of Pokemon back in Gen One, I guess it's going to be Jesse over. Yeah, and uh, if you read up uh, on them. They actually are like 16 years old. That, yeah, that's one of those weird facts you don't think about as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. it was like, I thought they were like 20. Yeah, like they they're like, like grown they up. Like... Well, and Ash starts out as 10, which honestly, that is the one thing the Alola, the re new animation series updated, was he actually looked more like the age he was rather than like, I don't know, he looked like 14, 15. At least when I got into it as a kid, I'm like, oh, Ash is a teenager. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Ten. Ten-year-old just go off on their own in the wilds of Japan. 
Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Well, like, that's, no danger yeah, at all. Are. That's no danger. He literally almost dies like five times his first night out, and then he gets saved by a legendary that we'd have learned about for two years. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Uh oh. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. It does make me wonder. <laughs> Fat Pikachu was better. Pikachu got too skinny. Not as cute. Yeah. Yeah, I went from Pika to Pika. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'll split the difference. Not like OG fat, like where he's round, but honestly, the movie Pikachu was perfect. The uh, Detective Pikachu is just yeah. the right blend of all the versions. Pika, yeah. Pika. Wooshy! Hello, Wooshy! Not too squishy, not too twiggy. But still all the cutie. Yeah. <laughs> Though know. Eevee is slowly getting up there in the favorites, so it'll be interesting to know if ever Eevee takes over. Eevee. Yeah, it would be. I would be uh, impressed if Eevee actually did, but I know it is one of what, our big favorites. It's. I do have trouble myself choosing between Bulbasaur and Eevee, so. I, I liked Evie growing up just because she is almost exactly like my dog. We've had uh, <laughs> Welsh Pembroke corgis since I was like eight. And so it's very, very cuddly. Except for the Aww. tail. My corgi didn't have a tail. <laughs> <gasps> and then and that was the great thing, too. I almost got the new Br the, the British game, whichever one it was, uh, for Pokemon, just because of that new electric type corgi Pokemon. I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh, it's God. just like Penny. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I can't imagine all the corgi lovers got that game. Oh, yeah. They better have. <laughs> so, um, Final Sight has a habit of... Um, fi uh, if we ever start talking about something that can be a sponsor, like Amazon... Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> Raid Shadow Legends. Oh, Get it that, now. Yeah. <laughs> I love it so much. I would love to see Chris do a commercial for Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, Actually, no, 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 that would no, be really one. entertaining. Get your Raycons now. <laughs> yeah. Raid, Raycon, and... Well, back in the day, it was Audible. That's honestly how yeah. I discovered Audible, but then they stopped yeah. caring. They got all there's... the internet people. <laughs> oh, no, there's, a, there's, a, there's an occasional one that pops up once in a while. Uh, has or, or uh, whatever what still comes up a lot is uh, the thing. What's it called? The the website maker. Well, uh, Wiz. Oh, uh, Wiz is one. Yeah. Uh, it's, dang it, it's the other one. Like build your own website. Super easy. Oh, anyway, wow. Wix. Squarespace. That's it. Squarespace. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All the Squarespace. Computer. Squarespace. Create your website now. Free and, Wh and easy. Which I did do at one point, and then I was kind of at the point where I'm like, I'm well, not even, I'm not famous enough to have websites. So I, I had to give up the the DNS and everything. Yeah. Hmm. Admittedly, I would love one as well. But a eh. website or a sponsor? Both. Both, yes. <laughs> sponsor can fund the website. <laughs> sponsor could fund the website, yes. Uh, or you know, if you're funding or funding, if you're getting sponsored by like a website for creating a website, wouldn't the website? URL for you be free because they're basically giving it to you. Uh, it depends. I know. Um. Yeah, you have to get creative with your URL, and then you basically pick a registrar to hold it for you. So, like, I had, uh, I went through registry.com, I think, when I used to have skyboltmusic.com, and mm -hmm. yeah, it was it was all right. And decent rates. I think I had a four year hundred ten dollars. So, yeah, not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Also, it's it's a complicated process. You don't think about like the actual mechanics yeah. of the internet until you have to register something with ICANN and go through you know DNS providers and stuff like that. And then Cloudflare way, and then finding a way to get it to the top of the pages. It is kind of neat. It's like you look underneath at like the the machinery of like entertainment or or internet things like that. What you only really think about like that's why I love like entertainment news because the politics of the business of entertainment is usually a lot more fascinating than the actual movies that they're that's sliding out. Especially the last couple of years. Can anybody of you tell me what Kingdom Heart Dark Road is supposed to be? I don't think it is like Kingdom Hearts game, but Dark Road. Is that the new Switch one, maybe? I only know the main games and then like the like DS versions and you know, little spin-offs. 
From so you Square know more Enix. than me. I know about Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, and 3. <laughs> I know. I had a friend who was really into Kingdom Hearts back when we were kids. And the one thing that stuck with me from him, it's one of the first commercial songs they use, which was Simple and Clean. Uh, which is a great song. It's very late 90s. <laughs> Wait, this is when so you cool. walk away, you oh, don't hear yeah. me say, please, oh baby, don't oh. go. Yeah, that, Sim- that one is so yeah. beautiful. Oh I love gosh. that song. I've been watching so many 90s shows on like Amazon and I got I have so many new services now just because of the current circumstances. So I signed up for a Funimation account. I've got Amazon Prime, HBO Max. Dude, also, Dude. I think Still Final better than television. Don't have to watch ads. That's all that matters to me. Yeah. Uh, Final Sight needs a hobby. It's have, have you tried ponies? <laughs> 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 it's a very time consuming hobby. Uh... Very time. Very, uh, very. Basically, what uh, Rotvik uh, Steelmug is saying, angry Norse Chris noises intensifies. Yes, that is truly what is happening because... Ah. <laughs> don't don't make me storm your shores. Yeah. Distant immigrant song plays. <laughs> plays you hear the, the drums. <laughs> oh, I love that. The, uh, the Trent Reznor cover from the uh, uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo movie is incredible. I used to listen to that all the time. There you go. Look at ah. the screen. Oh my gosh, what? <laughs> oh, what did you do? <laughs> Look at their cutie mark. <laughs> <laughs> what? Guys, it's sponsored. Get Ray Jedi Legends now. Press the <laughs> p- press the button to download. <laughs> Chris Shadow Legends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I only give you healers. You're welcome. Yeah. That would be funny. Just put it in RaidShadowLegends.com slash Chris. <laughs> I feel like if Chris was like designed a game, it would be somewhere it'd either be like straight like Animal Crossing in terms of like <laughs> cuteness and like uh or or it would go a little bit feistier and it would be like Splatoon. <laughs> where it's kind of a shooter, but it's much more fun. So we're basically mixing Doom Eternal with the uh... Animal Crossing. Yeah, yeah, it's like all the all the wet comics of Isabella playing Doom Eternal. Yeah. That's that's Chris's game. Oh boy, I, oh. those were great. That was a great no, crossover. You know, meme. you know what would you know? Still no, 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 no. Um, basically, the uh, Doom is the shooting of all the demons, as far as I know. That's Doom, yes. Doom, Doom the... is my dearest. And I am Animal Crossing. <laughs> I you. definitely did pick up Doom qualities from him last time we <laughs> talked. Demon Slayer. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, he is definitely Doom, doom guy. guy. Yeah. He's Doesn't doom. like to talk to people. Just want to get things done. <laughs> I'm going to uh, shoot through you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, but without the gun, he would now. rather just punch you. Yeah. That's even funnier, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. I love him, but he's weird, but I love him. He is amazing. Viking raids for cute beans. Uh how would that work? Like just <laughs> just a lot of the like uh, the what's it called? Uh the um, uh issue fallout guys, but um What's the name? Kill imposter stuffy. Imposters? Uh, what subject are we on? The game. The game. Oh, f- uh, oh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Among Us. Yeah, Among Us. So basically, it's Among Us beams acting like Vikings. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, that, that is that is a very <laughs> uh, game. Yeah. The Anglo Saxons won't know what's coming. Exactly. <laughs> Don't you bark. Don't you bark. No. Don't let you bark. I'm not uh, gonna uh, No, the dog. There's uh, a dog with me. And she's like, she's got the grrr noise going. I'm like, no. <laughs> not now. <laughs> Why? What is what is it what does he want? Or she want? Or they uh, want? Well she's sitting in the chair with me, but Aww. she's like I don't know. Usually when an echo happens, she's like, Oh, someone's here. She wants to bark. I'm like, No. <laughs> Worry, uh... people, hello. Be my friend. Probably. Yeah, she probably does hear y'all. She's like, Oh, there's people in the background. Mm-hmm. Her hair is all over my black shirt, and I don't think she's a white dog. Everywhere. Well, you're never getting those white. Nope. Hair gets everywhere. 
Yeah, it doesn't come out for a long time. Especially this little dog. I also they have less hair, but more gets around. <laughs> mm, I mean, is it, is it because of the big long haired dogs? They're, they just bundles up instead of goes everywhere. Yeah. It's all about how many layers of hair. Like if it has like a winter layer, it's gonna hair everywhere. That's how my corgi was. And I've heard yeah. similar for like huskies and other cold weather dogs. Yeah, so this isn't a cold weather dog. The same goes for humans with long hair. I mean, visual still finding hairs, my hairs in places I haven't been in in years. <laughs> yeah. What happened? How? How? What? Yeah, it just means yeah. they're going to make a clone of you someday. <laughs> yeah, I'm due for a haircut. I know every time I get a shower and I go to comb, like I just get hair that comes out. It's like, why, why is there so much? <laughs> and why is there still so much left? Yeah. Why is there still so much left? Yeah. It's like, I must, I must be thick haired. Yeah, I, I must have a winter coat. Yeah, I think it's kind of, uh, in Norway, we call it the troll hair. Because uh, basically, if you have very thick hair, on the top of your head, you usually have all the baby hairs sticking out. So you kind of look like a troll. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and that's why you have thick hair, because even though you're losing them, they're growing back even faster. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, as far as I that know, is the, an worst, image. the worst pet to have for hair, I think, are huskies. Yeah. yeah, they like explode hair. Yeah, they explode it's, hair. It's when like they shed. those uh, cattails uh, plants. If you open up the brown, oh yeah, like a... yeah, we have those in the creek by my house. And whenever this, you know, <laughs> late spring season is, they just pop everywhere. Look, guys, a wild corn dog. <laughs> it is amazing. Like you can get so close, and it's like it still looks like a corn dog, though. Yeah, yeah. And then you squeeze it as a little nine-year-old, and you're like, nope, it's not a corn it dog. Looks yeah, so. this is not the corn dog bush that Willy Wonka promised me. <laughs> this is my dad said these were corn dogs. I can no, eat no, these. No, 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 no. They I were cho these. chocolate dogs because they're brown. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean, like uh, uh, Dotsons? Well, wiener dogs. Yeah. That's what my dog, my dog's an interesting one. So her mom was a dachshund chihuahua, which is like the little tiny thing. Dogs? Yeah. Her dad, wait, 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 wait. Dachshund Doc chihuahua. That's an angry small dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay. yeah, her mother had a temper. A dachshund is the wiener dog, and then a chihuahua is like the little tiny chihuahua dog. You know, little... It's, it's an angry like, dog. That's not two breeds you should mix together, but okay. Well, it's literally just a chihuahua with a long body, this one was. and okay. uh, That's even funnier. Yeah, and her and the dad was a Jack Russell pit. <laughs> what? Ricks. Yeah, I don't know how that worked, but it was literally part Jack Russell and part like pit. And so Oof. when they had a child, that's a story. This, so this dog <laughs> here, yeah, this dog here is twice the size of her mother now and than her mother was when she was fully grown. So and she's mostly Jack Russell with the head of a Chihuahua. Wow. Okay, I need a picture. Dog okay. genetics are fascinating. I can show you. Come on. Puppy. Up here. Come oh, it's pointed up. Uh, there Hello. we go. Come on. Come here. I gotta turn the lights on. Puppy. Studio lights, please turn on. Puppy. Very fancy studio lights. Yes, very. They're controlled through the internet. Oh wait, I took those ones down. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I forgot that this, there was two here, and I took them down. So there's one behind me. And then. <laughs> I guess I, I gotta turn see on this a cowboy hat. Actual overhead light. No. Yes, there. She I always think of those as TikTok oh, lights, just because so many TikTok videos, people have the colored backdrop. <laughs> Don't yeah. sit on the dog. Come on. No, that's where she this, she sits behind me. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right. There she is. Or mostly, she's thirteen years old. Oh, she's cute. She acts like a Give me. <laughs> yeah, trust me, she acts like a pup when she wants to. Aww. Yeah, nice. I, if you hadn't told me your backstory, I would have thought she was just a uh, uh, Jack Russell mix. Is I had a like, yeah, I had a much more eclectic picture in mind as well. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking like full Chihuahua head and just a Jack Russell body, which did not mix at all. Well, you can see with like pit bull legs. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, she's I can see she almost... has some of it, but uh... yeah, she's literally almost, I would say three times the size of her mother because her mother was like, I don't know, shorter and very. And she also has somewhat of the length of a dachshund, but not. Mm. She has the excitement of a Jack Russell, though. What's up with her toe? Uh, it's a benign tumor. 
Oh, oh. it doesn't bother her that much. Benign just means it's not hurting her right now. Oh, okay. It means it's not growing. No, it is growing. Yeah. Very, very slowly. That's This is like a two-year process. It, it was like that big, and then now it's like that big. So, get take take it off? Yeah, when it becomes a problem, yeah. It's not Why a problem not right now. Why not take it off before it becomes a problem? Because it's not a problem? <laughs> It's like, because there's a, another dog that my uh, uncle had who, there was a tumor on their back. It, it stayed there their entire life. It was hmm. benign. It was the same thing on her toe, but just said on the back. It was a different dog, like a boxer. Hmm. Now I'm thinking Hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah. <laughs> the bells, 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 bells. Yeah. Apparently, hmm. Groom. A husky slash malamut is use a blow dryer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, have <laughs> I, have dryer. I have to use. I had to use that on my dog. I had to use that on my dog. We had one of those like rubberized gloves where you pet them with the glove and it just yeah. pulls everything off of it. Oh yeah. It's like two sided. They were like an ugly green too, if you find it. Yeah, yeah, something petco yeah. colored. Yeah. <laughs> what we call it's boomer tools but uh, oh, it's so great i know yeah. some efficiency people, i know some people usually ask this because our dear skybolt looks like an alicorn but he is not an alicorn do you want to talk no. about that yeah do, do we want to talk about the unwritten backstory for skybolt the character i uh, yeah it's a uh, it's loosely covered i did a song about it way back in the day it was actually a parody of anthropology by awkward marina and it was called Cybernetically. And the idea is his character is basically Winry Rockbell from Full Metal Alchemist. It's a, it's auto male designer. And so I came up with the whole little backstory that I never actually wrote, but it was this whole idea like his brother was a Pegasi and he almost died. And so he built him new wings and then he started building other parts for other characters. And there you go. So as far as powers, he's not some alicor. He's not secret Luna husband or anything like that. Just, uh, <laughs> Just an auto male designer. And uh, yeah, a power level like rarity tier, you know, fine tuning kind of that. Uh, one sec, Skyball. Thank you so much, Loopy, for rating us with 17 people. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. Fingers, okay. toes, and tiny noses. Brown Can we be sash canteen? <laughs> Hi, you guys. Yeah. Uh. Hope there's hope Loopy's stream went well. With all the drawings. Oh, we have a we have a visual. Fluffy Pimp is now following the butterflies. Thank you so much. <laughs> is that what it's called? Are your followers the butterflies? Yeah. Because butterfly family, because I also do like uh star butterfly and the forces of evil. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Ah, oh, thank yeah. you, Shapeless65, for following the butterflies. They would follow, but I don't know my Twitch login. Oh. Yes. The, most recent, the most recent lore I know of for butterflies was uh, I was watching uh, Game of Thrones videos, and uh, there's this one island where you know, like outsiders can't really land there at all because the island is full of butterflies, but they all carry like this sleeping sickness where anyone who's not immune to it, all the island natives, basically dies like in one night. Oof, it's very interesting lore. Hmm. But yeah, apropos lore, let's jump back onto the topic. Which topic? To your backstory, yeah, my friend. Oh, I, I mean, that was it. It's just, it's, yeah, it's, I, I was, I liked Full Metal Alchemist as one of my, um, what do I call it? Like middle school animes as in like, you know, I grew up with classics, Pokemon, Digimon, uh, <sighs> Dragon Ball, yeah. Dragon Ball Z, okay, and yeah, a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh! And a lot of Digimon too. Every Digimon gets so little love because it's such a chaotic series, Beyblade. but I was an OG adventure fan. And then uh, also some Sailor Moon. I had enough girls in my friend group that I could justify watching <laughs> Sailor Moon. So that was good. It's very, very pretty. Very, I really like their mains. Um, I really like their mains. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and so then, uh, like middle school and early high school, I watched uh, Full Metal Alchemist and Brotherhood, the remake series, and yeah, I, I liked Winry. I liked you know her smacking Ed with the uh, with the wrench and everything. That was really exciting. 
but uh, how did you end up with the design of your character? Why did you go with a unicorn? Oh, the design. Oh, uh, so um, yeah, yeah. I've always had like blue characters. I at least it used to be blue was my favorite color. It's kind of shifted in recent years, actually, where now it's more of like a Lyra mint, basically. Um, but yeah, no, I, I usually I liked blue a lot growing up in in um, different palettes. Uh, and then the electricity, that goes back to the Pokemon days, too. I always liked electric-type Pokemon, starting with Pikachu and then Zapdos, which was the electric, yeah, you know, legendary Zapdos. bird from the OG. I got this. That was my first Pokemon cards. I got this really cool uh, Thunderstorm gift box, which had a special Zapdos card in it. And ever since then, that was but that was my thing. And then <laughs> That's my become... Group. That's, yeah, and then I became an engineer, so it gave more legitimacy to, to that. So... <laughs> So yeah, at um, I, it's, I went with blue. I, I that was the other thing when I got into the horse fandom in general. I was like, well, you want something interesting? Like there were already a lot of like horse famous people that had like really plain colors to them. Like like the character is just kind of like brown, and then they have like dark hair. And I'm like, okay, I mean that's cool, but like like we already look like that. Like that's already what monkey people look like. So how about something colorful and magical? Bl bright blue with electric yellow hair. It's fun. E. Uh, uh, yeah, and then the gear is just that you know, you know, life life brought to machines. So that's that's the that's the auto brown, brown with dark hair, huh? <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I won't name the specific specific person I had in mind because um, he, he he has not been a good pony lately. But yeah. What? Oh boy. Anyway. Okay. Film shot is sad. <laughs> yeah. No, that's nice his, to see everyone. That's he's a film shot, but yeah, he's he's like no no no. <laughs> oh no no no. So no. we've got someone possibly working. Note to self: work on modding Skyrim into a working crossover game. <laughs> I don't but think you even need to, because Bethesda will just port Skyrim into every possible piece of technology that exists. Yeah. So, we already, we already have Midnight's backstory, we have... Oh, I can't even make a bird, I need a bird. Sorry. Uh, so tight. I I'm not sure what's really happening, but I'm having these like painful burps that really stings. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I think it's something I ate. Sounds like acid reflex. Yeah, might be that because, uh, as most of you Did... probably know, I don't normally eat meat or animal products, but uh, my dearest made uh, a special dish called honey meat this weekend. And I ate it because it is actually one of the few dishes that makes meat taste good. But the thing is, since I go so long without meat for multiple reasons. Um, Your body's not used to it. Yeah, so I get, I think that's why I get these uh, painful burps. And I'm trying mm. not to burp into the microphone. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. Yeah, just don't keep me away me. from soda and Coca Coca Cola, and I'll be good. Yeah. Although my stomach is really growling right now. Then go and get something to eat. The uh, honey roasted uh, turkey. I, I used to have that for like sandwiches at school and stuff. Was I was stuck playing zombies a little too long. The thing about VR is that time doesn't exist. You just have fun until you can't do it anymore. In my case, it's when my controllers died. Okay, but uh, how about you take 10 minutes where you go and get some food, and then you come back? Oh, I will. I do. I mean, after you know, six hours of playing, but, you know. Sweetie, go and get <laughs> only, food. Only when the gameplay is affected does does the Epic Gamer yeah. abandon their, yeah. their round. It's like, when I can no longer go, I will eat. I mean, I keep, like, a, I keep like a meat stick in my pocket occasionally, and I'll just eat that real quick. And if I'm going to go for, like, another hour and a half, and if I start getting, like, really hungry, I'll go. But I, only, I already only eat once a day anyways. Go so. and get a snack. Even yeah, the whole snack. concept of like the three square meals a day thing, I never I really never lived that way. Like I kind of think of it the same way of the food pyramid these days, where it's like yeah. that's something someone told you and it was wrong, but you know, it's a meme, so it's people like, remember oh, it. 
Yeah, if I eat three square meals a day, it's like, well, that's a lot of calorie intake. It's like, let me yeah. Just, let me just, you know, my diet is my calorie intake, so I'm just going to put in this amount of calories in a day, which is my one big meal at the end of the day, which is usually in an hour, and then I have my snacks in between if I like, like a meat stick or an apple, something like that. Yeah, like in the morning, I basically just drink coffee, and then I'll have like lunch at like noon or something light-ish, and then yeah, a, a big dinner. Never had breakfast in forever. Like I don't. Eat yeah. Breakfast. Never eat breakfast. I was never even big on breakfast foods. It's like, I kind of get it like every once in a while. It's like a treat or whatever. But I'm like, I don't know. Some people are ravenous for breakfast I mean, foods. I'll, I'll eat eggs occasionally and maybe a pancake. But uh, at breakfast time, because when I eat breakfast, then I'm all of a sudden full all day. And then when I go to bed, I'm hungry. So I just wait until the evening time to eat. So I think it's like too much. Like I almost feel sluggish if I like have a big brunch or breakfast or something. Yeah. I'm like, ah. It's it is work time. I just need coffee. Just coffee in the system. The only time you'll see me basically uh, eat three squares is convention times. Yes. Are you hungry now? Yes, I'm hungry now. <laughs> yes. Then I'm telling you, leave the computer for ten to five minutes. Just go and grab something, and then you can come back. I'm gonna be Ten to five. Excommunicado. What if I don't wanna? Well, you have to go. The wolves have spoken. Well. The wolves. <laughs> the wolves are coming Bye. after me. I gotta go now. Bye. Bye. Go get food. Uh, I would agree, Scrambles. Breakfast is the most part of the meal of the day. I, even though I sometimes don't, I usually get up relatively late. I usually at least have croissant or pizza croissant. toast, sorry. and then at around one, I'd have breakfast, uh, lunch. Sorry, so that I've at least broken my fast. And I'm ready to go. Yeah. It's a bit of a cultural thing, too. Like, I think in, like, Germany, lunch is considered the biggest meal or most important that people focus on. Stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. For me, i never been a fan of breakfast food myself. So I usually end up making other type of stuff for breakfast. Or if I'm not really hungry, I still take a pear or something. What's ironic, usually when I've had breakfast food, it's at like midnight. It's like Denny's, like late night Denny's with like college friends or something. That was that was my jam. Mm. Mm. Denny's, that's uh, yeah, American, of course, but... What it's very American. <laughs> what type of food is Denny's? Uh, Denny's is like miscellaneous, yeah, like American... Like mid Midwestern cooking for like the meals. I, they have a little of everything. It's like a, a classical American diner, basically. And then the breakfast foods, they have like the big spreads, the lumberjack feast. Uh, there were some memes a few years back because they went all out on the Hobbit movies for whatever reason. Ooh. So they like themed their entire menu around the Hobbit for like every December for three years. I don't know. It was kind of awesome. strange. That's it, awesome. it was a bit much, but the meals were interesting. Yeah, I just. Hobbit restaurant, sign me up. Denny's is yeah. where you get the Grand Slam. The Grand Slam is kind of boring, though. Get the Lumberjack Slam. That's the big one. <laughs> Grand Slam is like a generic term. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, but I, I, don't, I really don't go there either because I got burned out on diner food. Ah. Too greasy. Yeah, don't I think guess. that's the most healthy thing. No, no, it's not. <laughs> I'm going to show you what... Loopy was up to. Uh oh. Aww. Uh, did I post the same one? I think I posted the same one. I did. Whoops. Uh. uh delete. Yeah. And yes, final sight. I do agree. I could imagine a halfling running Denny's, especially if they have like everything type of food. Loopy was rewarding her followers with um sketch rewards, and I got two. Ah, oh, those are nice. great. Mm -hmm. Is it okay if I show the chat? Sure, go for it. Um, one is of Loopy's uh, uh, dog OC as a puppy playing with Chase, which is one of my OCs. And then the last one is, is Knight, another one of my OCs. Ooh. Space. Oh my gosh, infinite. Infinite, infinite. This is the quickest way so I don't have to save, save again, put in, 
put in to save and then put in. <laughs> so yes, that one's Loopy's OC and my OC, Chase, playing together. No. Which I think is adorable. Chase is a uh, Scrox, so part squirrel, part fox. And then oh. that's Knight, who is um uh Evil Side. Evil Side, yes, Evil Side of Midnight. Her OC. Who was actually helped design who uh, was designed with a little bit of help from with um well, more or less was designed by Silver Star. Silver Starling, sorry. Another friend of mine. A YouTuber. So this is supposed to be purple and the star is supposed to be white? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the star gives me Steven Universe vibes for whatever reason. <laughs> well, the funny thing is this character, she grows with the more magic she has. So, Fantastic. Um, she, so ah. she normally is like a little puppy. And instead of a star on her forehead, it's a diamond. Then if she gets some magic, she be it becomes a star. And if she gets more magic, she it becomes even more pointier star. And she goes a bit crazy. She ah, so she's a Digimon. <laughs> yeah, basically. Basically. She just oh. keeps on growing and then eventually becomes this monstrous who can't control herself and destroys everything in her past. That's very cliche. No, no, it's it's great. It's great. <laughs> so, as you probably have uh, noticed, I have a lot of books around Skybolt So See. Mm -hmm. That is because he writes a lot of stuff. Do you want to talk about some of the things that you have worked on or are currently Ooh. working on? I, I can't talk about what I'm currently working on, but I have been writing feverishly ever since Christmas. I, mm -hmm. I settled into a routine about five years ago where... After Chris, like between Christmas and New Year's, and usually like whatever break I have off from work, uh, I just I get into a good writing mode. Like um, two years ago for the Red Reaper story, uh, episode eight of Confessions of Wasteland Pony, starring Chris Blessings, uh, <laughs> I ended up writing I think three of the sections, like a good like the whole second hour into like like the two and a half hour mark, and, and just like five seven days. And uh, luckily, I had another like burst of creativity in the last couple of weeks, which has been fantastic. So I've been working on my first full length, like proper novel, which I'm hopefully going to do an audiobook and like launch through like Audible and stuff like that, which was always been my dream when I started writing. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been doing lately. Um, in last year, that was the the best the best part of 2020. Everyone's favorite year for me was actually then paying off my six year long confessions radio play story, which was which was a lot of fun. Um I think it's neat. It, it was written episodically. Uh it grew a lot over time. So like the first three episodes collectively are kind of like what each successive episode was after that, which is like three and a half, four hours or five in Chris's case. <laughs> so uh yeah, no, she she um it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, just kind of like you know, learning as you go. Like, obviously, I'm not professional or anything. It's all amateur. And, um, but just uh, as a form of creative, exp a creative expression has been great just because I have a very heady left brain, like, engineering job. So I don't have a lot of chances for, like, like, like back in high school and stuff, I was always big into performing arts, like stage and choir and drama and stuff. So the whole horse fandom stuff has just been uh, an outlet for that when I didn't really have any available. Fair enough. I mean, I was similar, to be honest. I was very much into the art, into drama and art, so I was more connected with the musicals than anything else. Oh, yeah, me too. I love so musicals. I, I am part of the drama group now, but it's only made me more realize, actually, I prefer uh, the musical side of everything rather than actual Acting. What kind of shows have you done? Oh, I've done Joseph about three times. Oh, fun! Yeah, I actually know... Do you, do you know the song which does all of the colors? I don't. I wasn't in Joseph. I I was in our school's next musical, which was Susical. Oh, okay. As Horton the Elephant. <laughs> well, I... To this... Not quite to the stakes. I did make a mistake recently. 
relatively recently where I got the colors slightly mixed up, but I basically, for years, I'm able, were able to basically say all of the colors in the Technicolor Dreamcoat. That's very important. <laughs> you got to get it right or, or God will kill you firstborn. <laughs> yeah. And of course, I played a number of different characters. I played Simeon, the brother. I played the butler. Um, and they've, of course, been in the chorus quite a few, well, most of the time. And what was it? Butler, chorus, Simeon. There's, oh, I played another character, but it's going out of my head. I think it was basically just a guard. Um, sadly, never on the, any of the main characters, but eh, it was good fun. It meant I had, in, when I played Simeon, I had to sing a song in with a French accent. Oh, fun. Do you remember? The good years in Canaan, the summers were endlessly gone. Yeah, bad accident accent, but <laughs> it was good enough for primary school. That's that's all it has to be. Yeah, that was sort of what I did with my uh, radio play was just an excuse to try different accents, which Chris's wasn't planned at all. I didn't think I'd find her accent. I remember when we first cast her, I thought she was like Welsh or something. It sounded Celtic to me for some reason. I don't know. It was obviously not pro picking it up. No harm in that. I mean, her accent is interesting to say the least. Yes, yeah, it's not true. her path to English was yeah, sounds like a, a good mix different sources. <laughs> well, it can kind of help that most of the Norwegian yeah talk a little some Sudeta. No, wait, that was all Norwegian. Um yeah, it going was. very uh, going very fast in the swing in the car. <laughs> <laughs> that's how they normally talk. Uh um, That's great. But then again, it also helps that your family takes you to other countries from, like, the age of three months. She was international. <laughs> yeah. I, I was traveling like a real wacky. <laughs> uh, at least two times a year, you go outside of Norway and bring home treasure. <laughs> Isn't that normal for Vikings? Uh, yeah, it is. That's why I said I was brought up as a real one. <laughs> uh, but, um, I also understand, uh, Skybolt, you're under needing for, um, experimentation. I'm finishing up a project that I've been working on for five years. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's not taken that long uh, at all. Hey, I'm going on three. The but, worst are the yeah the projects that shouldn't take that long but do. Yeah. At least do you have pro prospects of finishing it because that's the hell is if you can't get it finished. Yeah. All yeah. But it's gone to the point. Of... Hmm? All that work, all that time. Yeah. We wrote a whole documentary on it that we came out with last year for our Fallout Equestria thing. Oh God. It's yeah. gone to the point where I'm a bit like exhausted. Going okay, we'll figure this out. And we'll just finish up as quick as possible. <laughs> and hopefully not make any mistakes. So I honestly think this project's cursed, but we'll get there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you uh, ever want to hear me try to do a rarity, you better listen. <laughs> <laughs> falling on the couch part. Uh. Yeah, the, no, I don't think she had any of those scenes, actually. But I did also do Granny Smith, which, which was the very first role now, I ever voiced. That sounds incredible. <laughs> I want to hear that. <laughs> I think that chapter has been finished completely. So we're up to chapter 12, I think, now that we're, we're editing. And I'm editing backwards. So hopefully it will... Hopefully we'll have it done by the, well, I doubt the end of the month, but at least by February. Like a dramatized webcomic or a fan fiction? It's a fan fiction that was written by Brawny Buck. Okay. Um, and so we're basically doing an audiobook with sound effects, musics, all of the characters are cast, um, like everything. And Fun. I, I will never be doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to say the least. I know the feeling. Or at the very least, I have rules now set that if I ever do something like this, I have to be prepared for to do certain things first before I even get to the casting. 
otherwise it's going to be chaotic. Yeah, yeah, it's all those little lessons you learn about the actual production process. And it's like you have a day life and day job, so you're only doing this in whatever hours you can set aside for hobbies and whatnot, so it's the hard part. Yeah, I mean, my editor still me it's the worst project he's worked on. Oh, fun. Mm. That's that's comforting. He helped, He actually helped Visual with uh, Project Horizons. Ooh! So, okay. yeah. Speaking of projects that almost never finished, <laughs> I'm actually surprised he did. It seems like he was just going to keep writing that until, I don't know, he died or something. I know. He's done. I have a... Go on. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. I had returned with dinner. Did you continue? I have heard from friends, though, that there's one point in, like, chapter 30 or something of Project Horizons where it's like, you can tell that was the end of the original conceived story, and then everything after that was, and then, and then this happened, and then they killed the star god, or whatever. Mm, yeah. From, I have to admit, raise my, raise my paw, I haven't read the story. Me neither. <laughs> I have enough of it from visual to know quite a bit. But I, it, it, it's nuts. It's nuts. I and mean, then all of it's nuts. Yeah, I've read, I think, the first eight chapters. And it's actually really ironic because the biggest video on my personal channel, my Skybolt channel, is actually a parody of <laughs> of basically chapter one of uh, uh, Project Horizons. It's a song called 99 Problems, which is... Originally the Jay-Z song, and then this guy, Hugo, did a country version of it, and then I parodied Hugo's version. It's and like it, it whole... did really well for some reason. Yeah, though, yeah. But stop I first heard the song, actually... Too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not 99 problems. Yeah, see, it's the pun. It's 99 yeah. problems. Yeah. That's all you need. All of success is just word puns. Um, Guys, you are amazing, and... Uh, sadly, these burps and a small fever is breaking out. I think we have to end this uh, stream short. I'm sorry. It's okay, Chris. No worries. No worries. Yeah. Hopefully, we can take it take take it another weekend. I'm so sorry, everyone. Chris, do what you need to do. Yeah. Amazon orders. <laughs> Thank you. Also, yeah. yeah, also a fun fact, Skyboat. Every time you type in 99 problems, you're always the fourth one that pops up. Oh, yes, yes. Search engine optimized. <laughs> uh, hey, let me hear this, because I actually heard it like like four weeks ago. Uh. But yeah, uh, yeah, you guys can say your goodbyes. All right. Okay. Well, you guys, ho hope you guys have a good night, and uh, maybe check out P Pony and Wolf Productions if you want. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, link link down in the description and information about all of these wonderful people. Click on the photo or click on the link under the photo. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, uh, Skybolt Music on YouTube and also our East Corp Productions is where we did all of our, our big radio play stuff. Uh, yeah, check us out. And Film Shot from Film Shot Studios. Be sure you check out. Uh, right now, I only do collab work, so the person you can check out is uh, Shotgun Angel Productions on YouTube. You can oh yes, them. yeah. Find their stuff there. Uh, I, the next animation that I have coming up will be one of mine. And you can also check out my YouTube channel as well. There's not much there right now, but there will be something this year coming, and I can't wait to show it. <laughs> yep. It's going to be huge. All right, that's my outro. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much again, everyone. Stay safe, stay kind, and stay brownie. Bye-bye.